Hey guys, how we doing? And welcome back to Rico Wednesday. Today, a little different Rico Wednesday. We're going to go back over the last couple of weeks and I'm going to show you how I edited my night photos with my Rico GR3 in Lightroom. I don't use Photoshop. I don't put a lot of graphic work into my photos. I just tweak them a little bit. And again, I'm not a purist, but you do try to get the best photo in the camera if possible. It's not always possible. That's why I don't use JPEG straight out of the camera. I like going into Lightroom and I'll show you how I do that and how I edited some of our photos from the last couple of weeks. Had some people asking about that, so I did want to do a video and show you how I edited those. Again, those did not come directly out of the camera. If you're a purist, you might not like this video because, again, I, I do go into Lightroom and I do make adjustments. So let's check some of those adjustments out, see if any of these work for you, and, and hopefully this will help inspire you to, to create some better night photos. All right, so let's go to our first photo here, and I'll show you what we've got. This, I believe, was the thumbnail. So this was our final product. You can see the sky is not blown out. You've got the light here. We've got some, some things here that we, we, we can see what's going on here. It's a bit magenta, but again, it's a night shot. It's not the easiest thing to get perfect colors, and I kind of like that magenta look. So how did we get this? Well, here's what we started with. Let me go ahead and... This is what we started with right here. This is what we ended with right here. So how do we make this look like this? Well, let's go ahead and find out. I'm just going to go ahead. You see here I've got plus 30 on the contrast, and I've got plus 120 on the exposure. But here's the key. Minus 80 on the highlights and plus 80 on the shadows. This is something I work with all the time. I do this with all of my photos. I do this with the... Uh, with, with my street photos, with my portraits, with anything, I like to go in and start with this setting of minus 80 on the highlights, plus 80 on the shadows. Let me take those away and I'll show you what we end up with. Take away our highlights, and this is starting to look like a daylight shot. It's kind of blown out there, and it was not daylight. Take away the shadows, well now, what do we got here? And again, we've got nothing down here. I've, 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 I've adjusted nothing. I haven't even added sharpening into this. So I do have a little bit of noise reduction there. Uh, but, but, you know, I've got nothing on here except the contrast already. The exposure, again, we're at 120. So if you take that down, then we've got this. Well, the sky looks good. This is terrible. And if we bring this up to, say, about... Let's go to about one, eh, a little less than that. Now, let's bring our highlights down to minus 80. Okay, well now we don't have a very attractive photo. Let's take our shadows up 80. Now we're getting a little better. Now, now we've got something here. And I've got this contrast. That's all I did to make that. However, it's still a little dark. So let's go, we, again, that's why we were up at 110, 115 in that area. Okay, the radio filter, that's the one, that's the key. I use this in a lot of my photos. It adds just a touch of light or darkness, whatever you want to add, but it, but it does, it, it, watch this now. When I, it's, it's the little circle right here, and when you click that, there's my dot right there. That's what I'm highlighting. That's the circle. I, you, you basically draw a circle like, like this. I'll delete that because we wanted our other circle right here. There it is right there. I highlighted that area. What happens if I, and, and I, I added a lot of exposure, add, took away some shadow, added some clarity. What happens if we take that away? That's kind of a dull photo. That's okay, but nothing exciting. If you add this in, now we've got, we've got something to look at. Once again, without, with. So that's our image right there. So that's our first shot. Now let's go to another one here. Um, this one actually was handheld at one eighth of a second. And again, if you really, well, let's go back to one here. Let's go to one here that uh, the third or fourth one I took. You got the guy standing over there. Let's go to one to one. This is full on. And that's pretty good. That's for a one eighth of a second. One eighth of a second handheld. So, uh, and the, well, see, you see here, I did not bring the shadows up. If I would have, it just would have added more noise. And I like kind of the moodiness of not having a, a lot of shadow pulled out in this one. So I took out some highlights because if you don't, it's a little bright. These are a little bright. So 
pull those down and that, that makes these a little better. Um, I did add a lot of clarity to help that sharpness along. Again, I don't, I don't do much with the colors. Um, this one I do, I did sharpen to 50. Most of my photos I sharpen to 50. Um, the mask here, by the way, if you're not familiar with this masking, um, if you put your finger on your Alt button on Windows, I don't know what it does on Mac, but on, on Windows it's the Alt button. You hold it down, then you left click this, and as you can see, that means it's sharpening everything. Everything in white is being sharpened. I don't really want that. Uh, that adds to the, gra to the um, uh, graininess and what have you. So as you pull it over here, and usually I go to about 80, and as you can see, if you tweak, look at that, that's, that's, what's in sh that's all that's sharpened. All the black is left alone, which is good because that's where the noise would come from. So uh, that's an interesting little tool there if you're not familiar with it. But again, I don't do mi much adjustment. And that's that. That's, that's really it for that. Um, I did adjust the, you know, tweaked these or what have you. Let's go to this one. Here's another one that uses the radial filter. Now on this one, if you can see, I've got my minus 80 here. I'm sorry, plus 80 on the shadows. I, I pulled up a little bit to minus 52 on the highlights just because of the shot. I could have went higher with the exposure, but then it, I, I, then it becomes more of a daylight photo. So again, I always add a little clarity, nothing down here other than some sharpness. And so uh, what are we doing here with our radial filter? Well, if we take our radial filter off, that's a boring shot. That's, it's okay. It's nice. I could have cropped it probably more like this and just had this in there, something like that. Uh, but that's neat. So what did I do? Well, I added the radio filter in. How did I add the radio filter in? Very simply. I just clicked it and, and brought the exposure way up. Didn't really mess with anything else. Probably adds a little, ooh, add a little clarity in there and that even brightens it up a little bit more. Also take that down a hair if you want it, if you didn't want to be too prominent. So there we have it. That tool just, it can make or break a photo, I think. You can call it fake all you want, but it, nobody knows that that's not a, a street light, some sort of light shining on that building. Again, there it is without, there it is with. So again, if you're a purist and don't want that, then don't have it, but I do. This one I did not use a radial filter. Yes, I did. And let's see where it... And this one, you can see just the slight difference there that it makes having that radial filter there. And this is more of an oblong UFO shape one. And again, you can drag these anywhere you want, make them any size you want. Um, you can pull them anyway, just like a UFO, do anything you want with them. And... Uh, whatever and then if you don't like that one just hit delete and it's gone and we've still got our one here see i did i was very subtle with this didn't add too much just enough to make make the photo nice i'd like to add a little bit of clarity in there there's like a little bit of clarity there we go okay so that's that photo right there now let's go to the there's quite a few others here that um and I want to get to the, uh, the laundry mat one, but this one, as you can see, I like this. Uh, again, minus 80, only went down 44 to keep the darkness there. Only went down 44 on the highlights uh, as opposed to bringing up the exposure. And a lot of contrast in this. Okay, now I'm going to go to the second night of photography, of street photography. These did not make the video because it was still a little too light out and kind of kind of neat shots there, but they did not make the video. Um, it was still a little bit too much daylight, as you can see. Plus 80, minus 80, always works. Okay, this shot, my dinner bell shot. I really like this one, although I like this second one better because there's no cars. If you want to do a long exposure, you can get a car light streaking through there, but I like this, and there's my crop there. You can see I did cut it in a little bit. Wouldn't have hurt maybe to expand this crop a little bit. But at any rate, um, I did not use, I believe I did use the, ra oh yes, I did use the radial filter. This is another good use, a very small tweak use of this radial filter. As you can see, watch this as I pull this out. Boom, see right here, right there. All I did was add a little clarity and just a little exposure. I could have almost taken out some of the highlight just to not have these so blown, but there you go. And, and that's, uh, 
here's our before and after. There's our before. Not that exciting. Not that exciting at all. And there's our after. I could even add a little contrast if I wanted. I, do, I, I don't overbake my photos. I like to keep them as, as simple as possible. This one didn't go to the full 80. Let's get back to it. Didn't go to the full 80 on the shadows or the full 80, minus 80 on the highlights. So as you see, um, I, I do some differently. Let's get to, I like these. Uh, let's go to this one, which was my thumbnail. I really liked this. Of course, I cropped it. And I did not do the minus 80 plus 80. If I'd have done that, I'd have pulled this way down. That would not have looked nice. Uh, that's a little blown. That's a little under. So somewhere in there, and you can really, you can see inside what's going on here. Got the lady behind the machine. So if these cars hadn't been there, it would have been better, but it kind of adds, you know, the fact that there are people in there. Otherwise, it would have been cool, would not. But I don't typically go back and make a perfect photo. I'll just walk by, take the shot, move on, and I get what I get because that's life. And again, no major changes on this photo. No major tweaks. And let's see if I did any radio filter. I did not do a radio filter on this one. So um, that's basically, there we go. Let's see what it looked like before. It was almost the same. I, I really didn't have to do much to this out of the camera. As you can see, this is a little brighter than that. Not really a problem, but that was a simple one, actually. So hopefully this video, hopefully this, hopefully the camera's still running here. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. Um, yes, I do use my glasses when I edit so that uh, I can see all the glory that, that is uh, uh, the, the Ricoh GR3 product. So um, I love doing the editing. I love this side of photography as much as I love taking the photos. As a matter of fact, when it's cold outside or cool outside, I prefer to be inside editing. It's like, man, I wish I had more photos to edit, but I got to go out in the cold and get them. So that's how I do my editing. That's how I do my night editing. Hopefully you've learned something here. Hopefully it's been helpful to you. And uh, go out, take some night photos, get a free copy, a trial copy of Lightroom. And if you have to, I, I do the standalone version. I don't do the $20 a month or the, the online. I don't like to put my, my raw files up in a cloud. I like to keep all my raw files on my my hard drives for and I always double I double I, when I buy a hard drive I buy two hard drives if I got a two gig hard drive I've got two two gig hard drives and I put everything I mirror everything so I leave it on the computer while I'm working on them and once I am done or I have the video completed or whatever everything's uploaded and it's all done I'll move all that stuff over to a second hard drive actually because I copy everything onto the first hard drive and then when I'm done I put everything onto the second hard drive and then copy that back over to the first hard drive to cover up anything or to make sure everything is, is exactly the same. And it takes a little time, but, but, but I can go back and get anything I need and it's not on my computer that can easily die or quit on me at any moment. So uh, hopefully that's helpful to you. All right, guys, I do appreciate it. Please like, please subscribe, please tell a friend, please share, please do whatever you can. I do appreciate it immensely and stay tuned. We'll be back with more on this channel. And of course, we'll be back for next week's Rico Wednesday. So until then, have a good one, everybody, and we'll see you then.